Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Say It Aloud podcast. My name is Jason Bouchel. I bet you didn't expect to see me here. But today I will be interviewing Vasudhi Kumar, who is my coach and who you typically see on the Say It Aloud podcast. And I'm so excited to interview her today. Um, so welcome, Vasavi. How is how are you feeling? And it must be strange to be on the other side of the seat. It's it's funny being interviewed on my podcast. It's the first time I've ever been interviewed uh, on my podcast, and I couldn't think of I can't think of anyone else that I would choose in this moment to interview me um, other than you, Jason. I've known you. By the way, I checked yesterday. We first started working together on, I believe it was May 17th of last year. It was May 17th. Oh, wow, yeah, year. a little yeah. over a year yeah. anniversary. <laughs> yeah. And you've done, you you know, you've just like blossomed into this like beautiful flower who's doing so many amazing <laughs> things. And here I am trying to take control as a host to tell all my audience about how amazing you are. But I'll let you go ahead and introduce yourself to the audience. Go ahead. Awesome. Well, thank you again for this opportunity. Um, yeah, my name is Jason. I recently graduated from Stanford Business School. Um, my passion points are really about following your intuition and body wisdom to make big life decisions in your life. Um, and I'm just really excited to be here and get to kind of delve into maybe some parts of your life, Vasavi, that maybe the audience hasn't had a chance to explore before. Well, you know, right before we get started. Well, actually, right before this, I had a little bit of a meltdown with you. And that's what I love about working with my clients. And especially, you know, you, especially Jason as well, is that I always want to show every single side of me to my clients. I don't want to ever, you know, I had a little bit of a moment before we got on here. But like I said, before we hit record, these emotions that I'm experiencing, I want to channel it into um, really just having a great conversation with you. So I'm going to let you take over. And uh yeah, let's get started. Awesome. Yeah, let's let's delve into it. Well, I think the first question that I have that I'm actually very curious to hear, and I know your audience will be as well, is what's something you've never been able to do well? You know, I think you do such this amazing job of portraying us all as we're all humans. You know, we have our strengths, we have our weaknesses. So maybe just to kind of start on that human element, what's something that you've never been able to do well? I, well, one thing that I cannot do well is hide my emotions on my face. It's mm-hmm. just something you, it, it takes over my, my entire being, my energy shifts, my face changes. Like I probably would never be great at poker because my, I wear my emotions on my face. It's just my, you know, you can just see it. In fact, in social work school, uh, when I was getting my master's in social work at Columbia, we had to do mirror exercises where we had to hold a mirror up and we had one of our classmates talking to us about their life story, but we had to be looking in the mirror to make sure that we kept a stoic face, which I just think is ridiculous because it's like, when I'm talking to somebody, I want to know that there's some expression or reaction to what I'm saying. Uh, So I've never been able to fake how I feel ever. Like if I do, it's like, I, it, it, it's very hard for me, but what I don't do well is um, fake how I feel. And, And you can, you can clearly tell on my face how I'm feeling. Yeah, well, as your coachee, that um, totally makes sense because some of the things we've been working on is you really pushing me to just always say how I feel and be 100% transparent and authentic. So that just kind of makes a lot of sense for me hearing you say that. Um, And what it kind of brought up for for me was, um, I think in the present, I am similar in that it's really hard for me to fake how I feel. Um, I was thinking about how when I used to be more in the corporate space, used to play the game uh, two truths and a lie as like an icebreaker and I would always end up saying like three truths I like would like try to do it and then I would just totally screw it up and it just sort of made me think about that moment because I think um, I too am just it's hard for me not to kind of say how I feel in real time um, and especially when it comes to like not being truthful so I love that game we should play that yeah yeah, we should play. I want to practice it. It is it's yeah. a common icebreaker and I'm I'm really bad at it. So um well maybe another question I have um in the spirit of kind of lying and truth telling, when did you learn that it was safer to lie than it was to say things out loud? I know you talk about that a lot and the importance of saying it out loud. So when do you think that kind of first um that first started? Um, I mean from a, a very young age, I just wanting to I think for me, it was really hard to kind of keep things inside. So I would say how I felt. And I feel like oftentimes I would be met with, that's not true. You know, you don't really feel that way. No, that's not the case. You know, so I would, 
you know, I don't think anyone's born a liar, but we learn to lie because it's safer. My mom would really get upset. She'd raise her voice when I would lie. My father would, you know, freak out. My, I remember my dad would call me crazy, all these things. So I just learned it's better to just keep stuff inside from a very young age. So I would say, I mean, four or five years old, you know, um, but I really started to lie a lot more when I was like six, seven, eight, like much older. I mean, not much older, but you know, it, like six, seven, eight. And then especially when I was like 12, 13, 14, middle school was so hard for me. It's when I started to, um, I started to hang out with like the cool kids at school. I started smoking cigarettes when I was 12 years old. I do not smoke anymore. Um, but I, you know, I learned, I didn't feel accepted at home. I did not. And so i tried to seek acceptance outside. And so to do that, I just did the things that I thought the kids at school would want me to do. Like, so for example, at 12 years old, who starts smoking cigarettes at 12 years old? That's just way too young to be doing that. But that's what I did. And I remember, like, I remember sleeping. I remember the day that I smoked my first cigarette. I was 12 years old. I was I was sleeping and I was smelling my fingers when I was sleeping. And I could smell the, um, I could smell the cigarette smell on my fingers. And I remember thinking to myself, should I tell my mom? I know I should. I know I, I shouldn't be smoking. Should I tell her? And I remember hearing this voice like, nope, she's going to freak out. And so I just kept that inside, that secret. And it's like, it's really true. Our secrets keep us sick, right? So the more I hid secrets, the sicker I got. And by sicker, I mean the more disconnected I became from myself because I knew I shouldn't be lying. But I just learned from a young age, you know what? It's better to just lie than to hear the person's reactions, you know? And... um that's why now I think I would rather be honest and say exactly how I feel than live with that, than, than feel split within myself. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, I feel, feel like you've taught me and I, a lot of people that saying it out loud is almost like the antidote to, to you know, to kind of that, that kind of secret, that secrecy and that sickness that you talked about. Was there like a point in time where you had that revelation or epiphany like, oh, saying it out loud that that's kind of um kind of a way you know to kind of circumvent some of that those more negative that's a great that. that's a great question i would say that i've been uh i've always encouraged people in my life to say it out loud since i was a young kid in fact in mm -hmm. my book and, and for those of y'all listening you know i'm going to plug my own book on my podcast go to vasavikumar.com forward slash waitlist to get on the waitlist for my book say it out loud in my book i speak about at a very young age when my parents used to fight i used to stand in between them and I'd say, and I would mediate them and I would be like a conflict mediator. And I would say to my dad, okay, now you say to mom, how you feel, you say how you feel out loud. Then I would tell my mother, okay, you listen. Okay. Now you respond out loud. I just wanted to repair my parents because it just felt like they just were not able to communicate. So the idea and the practice of saying out loud, I've been, I think I, I, I knew that that would, that was the healthiest thing to do from a young age. Cause I could just feel everyone was really, um, suppressed. Like I was I remember sleeping with my sister. Um, uh, my sister and I always shared a bedroom and I could hear my parents fighting and I would get up in the, I, I, I would get up at like 11 or, you know, whenever I could hear them fighting in the other room, I'd get up out of bed. I would go and I'd mediate them. And I'm like, God damn it. Why can't you all just get along? Just say it out loud. Uh, for me though, I lied a lot. I lied a lot. And, the, and I, I don't want to just say like these white lies. I, did not share how I really felt about things. And I'm, it was like, oh, everything's fine. Or, you know, um, and I, oftentimes I would take one for the team. And what I mean by that is this, there was never any space for my emotions ever. It was always about the adults. The adults just could not get their shit together. And so I learned that there is no space for my emotions. So in a way, not only did I lie to my, my family, but I lied to myself about how I felt, right? Because it's like, oh, there's no room for me. So I would convince myself that how I felt wasn't a big deal, right? And that's how I coped. I took one for the team. Well, if they can't get their shit together, I'm just going to have to deal with this on my own. But when I truly started to live a life of honesty, and it's and it's an everyday decision to be honest, okay, in my friendships, uh, with clients, uh, with, 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 with anyone that I work with, right? Like if something just doesn't fit, it doesn't fit. This is an everyday moment-to-moment -moment decision. But I would say when I really really got committed to saying it out loud and being honest was when I went back to rehab the second time. Um, when I, when I, I was like, oh, I'm sick of this chaos in my life that I'm creating. I got, I got, I, something has to change. So I got honest with myself and yeah, and it's an, it's an everyday process. There are still, uh, situations that I can recall from even a few months ago where 
I, you know, especially with former partners, I haven't been fully honest about how I felt, but it wasn't because I am a liar. It's because I think I intuitively knew you can't handle my truth. So I'm just going to deal with it myself. You know, mm -hmm. I don't know, really know if that's me lying or if it's just me preserving my peace, you know, mm -hmm. but that's, that's how I dealt. But now I'm in a place where I want integrity and honesty with every single relationship that matters to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, thank you for sharing that that kind of journey and that story, I, it makes, yeah, I totally agree that it's, um, you know, it's, it's one thing to know that um, you kind of to be the mediator and to kind of know what's going on, but then to actually practice what you preach and be honest with yourself and with others. Um, it's kind of an entirely different practice. And so love the idea of that moment where you committed to it, because it is kind of a daily practice you have to do because I agree, it's like, it's not easy to tell the truth. It's actually a lot harder um, it can come up a lot of negative emotions can come from it. But um, but in, ultimately, it, it does feel kind of lighter and more freeing. Well, I mean, I mean, just to be very transparent with with my audience right now, even before we hit record, I was going through something emotional in my personal life. And I got on Zoom with you, Jason, and I was hysterically crying and I would not normally uh, cry in front of a client because I have my own like, oh, I got to look a certain way or, you know, oh, I got to be strong for my client. I can't let my client see me. But I was like, fuck this noise. Like I'm gonna, I cannot lie to you and just be like, oh, everything's great. Everything's fine. It's like, no, like I'm not going to suppress my emotions to make you or anyone feel better. And I actually feel lighter and more clear in even having this conversation with you because even before this, I was just honest with you about something that happened and, and you know, ha 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 happened in my personal life. And then we went ahead and hit record. You know, I just had to get it out, say it out loud. And uh, that's that. So it's it's I can't do the job that I'm here to do that God wants me to do if I keep my shit inside. I, I have to release that so that I can be a clear vessel for whatever is meant to move through me and use my voice in a way that is uh, authentic and healing for myself and others. So. Yeah, I mean, I just, I just find that so inspiring. I know as a coach, you have completely inspired me to just say things out loud on a day to day basis. And it's, it's just so true. It, it, you feel so much lighter and so much freer. And I really think it is that commitment piece. Like once you commit to it, like as you described in your journey, it's something I've done too. Like, it's easy. It's you hold yourself accountable to it. Um, and I think that that's kind of really where the magic happens. Yeah. Um, another question I had on that point is, is there anything that you have been wanting to say out loud, but haven't yet? I know, you know, you, you practice it daily, you inspire me and others to practice it daily, but there's always new things to say out loud. At least I find that in my life. Is there anything new that you've been wanting to say out loud or just that you haven't had the chance to yet that you'd want to do now? There are two things that I haven't said out loud. I think like openly, openly, like I've thought it and I've said it like one-on-one -on -one to people, mm -hmm. um, like safe friendships, but I've never said it like on a platform like this. Yeah. Um, so here's the first thing. I am unavailable for anything that makes me feel like shit. I am unavailable for like people who are just sitting there talking to me about like, li okay, so I I'm going to say this. If you're not paying me, but for me to listen to you, right? Like I, I, unless I am like getting compensated for it, I don't want to hear your shit. I really don't. My energy is like, I am so clear that my energy will change your life. Okay. But that does not mean that when you are in my presence, you're going to just verbally, you know, masturbate all over me. I'm very clear that if you want to, if you want my energy and you want to share, like I, there needs, it needs to be mutually beneficial for me, right? Mm -hmm. Which means I'm going to be compensated. If I'm going to be giving you my time and energy and you want my energy and you want my advice and you want my perspective and um, which I'm excellent at, I have excellent perspective and I am extremely validating and I also challenge my clients. I'm not going to just give that shit away anymore. You know, if, if you if you want my energy, you know, you can listen to my podcast, you can watch my videos. But uh, I had someone yesterday, they were like, hey, can I pick your brain for a second? No, you cannot. You cannot. You cannot just pick my brain for a second. You, can, you just can't pay me for that. So that's something that uh, it's taken a really long time. And even as I say it out loud, it feels it still feels new for me to say that because there is that part of me that's like, oh, man, that sounds arrogant. Oh, that sounds this. It's like, you know what? 
If you've been through what I've been through in my life, you'd be the same exact way. If you've given away yourself to everyone that you've met and just allowed people access to you your whole fucking life, you'd be saying the same thing. So I am unavailable for people. I'm unavailable to just let anybody into my circle. My circle is very small. They include my family, my close friends, my clients, my dog, myself. That is it. That is it. You know, it's just... That's it. Like, I'm good. I'm good. So, like, what are you bringing to the table? I am unavailable for one-sided shit. I don't want it. If you're not, you know, if you're not paying me, then what What else What, what else are you doing? And even for the clients, like, I'm going to use you as an example. Jason, you pay me, but I... You're, and you're a joy to work with. Like, I don't just want your money. I want I want your energy too, right? So it's like, I don't care how much you pay me. It's It's about the money, but it's also about what kind of client are you? Like you're a joy to work with. You are like a yummy, delicious client to work with. But if you weren't, I wouldn't work with you. And I'm even clear about that. I'm not desperate for anybody, anything like I used to be. So that's the first thing. I can't believe I just said that out loud. That was a little uncomfortable. Uh, The other thing that I want to say out loud is um, I am available for curiosity. I am available for fascination. I'm available for acting jobs, voiceover jobs. Uh, if you need me to, you know, help you, um, work on stuff that you're writing or speaking, like I want to use my creative talents in the most fun way possible. Uh, I'm no longer just, you know, available for just, just talking about things. I want forward moving progress because this is a two way street here, right? Like I didn't just go into business to just watch you coast, Right. I just, I'm just I'm just not into that. Right. So and I think a lot of people know that when they work with me, that their life is going to change, which is why I don't have tons of clients. The clients that I do have, like you, for example, we've been together for a year. Oh, my God. You, I mean, Stanford graduated from Stanford. You just did a one man show, which we'll put the <laughs> link in the show notes. You're going to be, you know, performing your show now at a theater. Right. Like you just pitch that to a theater. I want clients like that because you know what? We can talk all the fucking live long day about your past and your parents and your this. But at the end of the day, you start healing. All that's great. But then what are you doing? What are you doing to be the embodiment of your healing? Right? I want to know how are you channeling that? How are you expressing that? And I never used to be picky with clients. I used to just take on everybody. But that was my own um, thinking is that it was my job to be um, accessible to everyone. And that is no longer the case. You do not have access to my energy unless I let you. It has to be mutually beneficial. And that's that. Well, I love, I love that you shared both of those things out loud because um, they, one, they just, they feel universal in, in some way, you know, when the first one you talked about this idea of like one-sided relationships. And I just feel like whether you're a coach or even just in your friendships, like I hate when you're at a table with someone, even if it's your friend and, you know, there's no payment involved and they're just talking about themselves and maybe they're just not reciprocating like, oh, well, what's new with you? Like, those just types of relationships I just don't think are healthy. And so seeing how you kind of translate that to kind of your, your coaches or just other types of engagements with people, um, I think is a concept we could all, all kind of learn and, and benefit from. And I want to just say one thing. It's like, listen, we all have stuff. We all have stuff. I'm not saying we don't like, oh, I don't want, it's just, it's like, we talk about your stuff. Let's acknowledge it. And let's move forward. Like, mm-hmm. let's stop sticking in the shit. Like, okay, now what? Okay, now what? Because it's like, I have personally worked diligently to heal myself from a lot of the stuff that I've been through. I'm in a place in my life. I'm good. You know, sometimes do I get knocked down? Yeah, right before this call, I felt emotionally, uh, I, I felt emotionally knocked down, but I said it out loud. I talked about it with you. I said, okay, we have an interview to do. Let's do it. Let's, let's give the people what they need. That's mm-hmm. it. I'm, I move on. I don't, it it, it it doesn't take very long for me to get out of my stuff because I've now created the muscle where it's like, I'm aware, I say it out loud, I give myself what I need, we move on. That's mm-hmm. that, okay? Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, wow, that just felt really freeing to say that. Oh, wow. good, right? Yeah. yeah. I, it sort of feels like the ultimate juice cleanse, like being able <laughs> to say it out loud. It's like, you get it all out, you feel kind of nice and, and clear. And that's, I think, what kind of propels you to be able to move forward and take action. At least that's how that sort of feels like that's how it works for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, are there any catchphrases or mantras that you say out loud? I feel like some of your audience members and including myself, I love mantras. Every time we do a coaching call, I'm like any mantras to kind of like really embody what we're talking about. 
So yeah. Chris, if you have any that you find yourself using that maybe people could benefit from, either, you know, emulating or maybe even tweaking to their own kind of context. Okay. So I've been, you know, I've, I've really, um, I've been thinking a lot about my connection to my body. I want to share a quick story. This is, I've never shared this out loud. So let's just, here we go. I remember, I remember I was having sex with this guy. I was a sophomore. I was a junior in college, undergrad, undergrad. He was so hot. Uh, Ryan was his name. I won't say his last name, <laughs> but I remember we were having sex. I was very drunk, probably coked up as well. And I remember having sex with him. And, but I remember all I kept thinking about was, or wishing was my parents would walk through the door and save me. And I remember having sex with him and with every guy that I've slept with, especially in my undergrad days, I always, I would be having sex with the guy or they'd be having sex with me, but I'd be thinking and visualizing someone, especially my parents walking in through the door to rescue me. And so I share this because I realized how disconnected I was from my body, even with sex. Like I was just like, I knew like it just, it, I was just doing it to do it. Right. Cause I was also not in my right state of mind and I was looking for intimacy in all the wrong places, you know? And, um, I've worked very, and I share that because I'm at, at a place where I feel so connected to my body. And so I, one of the things that I say to myself, it makes me think of, um, there's this, uh, audio on TikTok and on, on Instagram reels. It's with, um, James Corden, James Corden, right? James Corden and, uh, Justin Bieber. And so Justin Bieber's like, immediately, no, immediately, no. There's like a trending audio where he's just like, immediately, no. So my thing that I, my body, how it speaks to me now I can meet somebody or I can be on a sales call with the client or I, and I'm I, my body literally and I, I love it because it's a little humorous because I love that audio. He's like immediately no. And my body will say to me immediately yes or immediately no. Like I can literally feel it be like immediately no. And I'm like, yes, that's it. I don't question it. Nope. Because and I share that story because it's funny. Back in the day, I was so disconnected from my body. I was waiting for my parents to come rescue me. It's like I, I almost wanted to be caught in the act so somebody could rescue me from my own living hell, being fucked by this guy who didn't give a damn about me, right? I was just a vessel for him to plug his dick into, okay? And I'm at a place now where I don't need anybody to rescue me. My body has always been my savior. It's always been there no matter how much I've put my body through. It has always been there no matter how much drugs and cocaine and Xanax and this, I'm cigarettes. I'm, I'm, it has always been there. And by the grace of God, I'm still alive with very little damage to my body, thank God. So now I'm so connected and so I listen. I listen and that's my catchphrase, immediately no. Or immediately yes. I, that. I gotta I gotta check out and save that audio list for the It's very it. funny and I, I just I it makes me laugh. That's the thing. It's like that that video of them is just so funny because James Corden is like singing the song and Justin Bieber's in the in the passenger seat going immediately no. The kids don't like that. Immediately no. Like it's just funny. And I'm like, yes. And so like I like trained my body to basically like I started saying that. It, it, like <laughs> even making small decisions. I'm like, okay, how do we feel about tacos? immediately yes all right how do we feel like making this pasta immediately no it's too hot you know like i can't do tomato sauce in the summer because it gets all acidic so mm -hmm. I, I i started small with like little things just to see how that felt and i met up with this person today uh just to meet and uh, it was our first time interacting and within probably within the first oh god i hate to say this within the first minute or two my body i was like oh no this is gonna be it like no <laughs> nope not doing it but you know that's that you I mean I give people a chance and I, I just, I listen to my body. That's it. Because when you have been disconnected from your body for that long, and then you finally reconnect with it, I don't ever go against that anymore. Ever. Mm -hmm. I refuse to do that. I know, I know you understand this too on a personal level, right? Yeah. I mean, I, yeah, I totally relate to what you're saying. I too, I'm a big believer in intuition and listening to your body. And yeah, I think even, especially when you meet people, I feel like within, yeah, maybe 15 seconds, there's just like, my body has a reaction and the reaction is usually either like, yeah, like this could be like, you know, like a potential for a connection, or it's just like immediately, no, this is just not my vibe. And I always trust that. I just think the body has a way of kind of knowing what the conscious mind cannot. Um, and I think it's funny because oftentimes they say like, don't judge a book by its cover or like, you know, like first impressions don't always matter. But I agree. I think when you're disconnected from your body for that long and then you reconnect with it, it's just sort of like this powerhouse of intuition that I, 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 I just think it's worth trusting. Here's what I want to, um, what, what, oh shit. I was just going to say, 
Imme- oh my god, I just had a thought. Okay, you know what? It, it'll it'll come back to me. I uh oh god, these awkward pauses. Wait, what was I just gonna say? I was gonna say the immediately no. Oh, I you know what? I actually don't have the thought in my head. It it, it came and it left. I, I don't even know. I was gonna say something. If it comes back, it'll come back. But anyway, you can keep going. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess curious. I know that you're you're been describing that that's kind of a recent thing you've been saying to yourself. Anything that you would want to encourage your audience to say more of out loud? You know, I know you. You work with a lot of people and, and, and kind of been in the service of a lot of people. Anything that you just feel like more people should be saying out loud because it is just maybe such a common experience. I think um, most people. Oh, actually, I just remember the thought. I just remember yeah. the thought. Can we go back to that? This no, is go back to that. this is this is how I know within the first few seconds of meeting someone. First of all, I'm very clear what I bring to the table. I am very clear my energy, and, and it's and it's infectious and contagious nature. I am very aware of the fact that I can walk into a room and change the entire dynamic the minute I walk in because of who I am and my energy. So I'm very clear on the value. I could tell right away, oh, you're going to fucking drain me, aren't you? Because you just, you know, people people find out I'm a therapist, they find out I'm a coach, and they think that means they can verbally masturbate and jizz all over me. No, thank you. No, you cannot do that. I could tell right away you're going to bring me down. You're you're going to you're going to you're going to like dump all over me. Versus, like, I have a girlfriend who lives down the street, Sylvie. She's amazing. When I talk to her, it is so light. It is like we ju- we're just on that same level. It's like she's not bringing me. To- it's just it's we're just here. And even with my clients, even with you, Jason, the conversation is always an up leveling. It's always an up leveling. And even you know, you have your bad days. You you have those days where you're not. But there's there's just this under there's this willingness that you bring to the table. There's this. You don't want to sit in it for forever. You're willing to process it. You're willing to sit with it. And you want to you want to move through it. You're not just sitting there to fucking talk about it like it's your life story narrative, right? There are some people that have a narrative and that's just what they're conditioned and they just want to keep talking about it but not move through it, right? So I can tell right away when it's like, when someone starts talking to me, it's like, oh, this is your life story, isn't it? And you're not trying to move through it. So I'm going to be brought down and I don't want to deal with it. So Mm -hmm. that's what I was going to say. I could just tell when it's going to bring me down, you know, and uh, there's nothing, there's nothing in it for me. And, and you know what? I'm okay with saying that. Why should I be involved in something that is one-sided? Like why, Mm -hmm. how's that fair to me? Why I'm supposed to be like the Lord and savior for everybody. No, I'm not. And that's something I had to work through. I had to work through my belief that I am supposed to save the world. No, I'm not. I'm here to save myself and heal myself and help myself. And through my healing, I share that energy and you can use that energy to then inspire you to be connected to yourself. Right. But I am not responsible for you at all. I am responsible for how I show up and my energy with you. That's it. Uh, but I, I'm also responsible for, I'm when I say I'm responsible for my energy, that goes the other way too. The minute I feel like, oh, this is just a heavy, draggy conversation, I'm done. I'm done. I don't want it. No, thank you. I just don't. I'm allowed to say that. And that's taken me 40 years to say yeah. that. Immediate no. Immediate? Immediately no. Okay, sorry. <laughs> now let's go to the next question. No, no, I'm, I'm so happy you remember. Podcast. Okay, go. <laughs> I'm so happy you remembered that thought because... Um... Yeah, it makes so much sense that like it is about energy preservation in, in a lot of ways. And it reminded me, I think just the other day, we kind of came up with a mantra for myself together, which mm-hmm. was I am going to be intentional about where I spend my energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and that mantra has been working super well for me. And it just kind of reminded me of what you're describing. I think when my body reacts, when I meet someone, it probably is about that too. I think it is just a matter of like, wait, is this going to bring me up or bring me down? Because, you know, you energy is, is a meter and you have to kind of be, it's precious and you got to cherish it. Yeah. Thank you for acknowledging that. I appreciate that. Yeah. 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 Um, well, so the question, um, the second question I wanted to ask was, yeah, anything you wanted to encourage your audience to say more about out loud, um, whether it be about energy or maybe something totally different? I would love everyone listening. I encourage you to just say what you want. <laughs> I don't know what that is for you. You have your stuff. Every, I, I'm not inside your head. You're inside your mind. You're inside your body. Whatever it is that you've been keeping inside, say it out loud. That's it. I whatever it is, whatever is keeping you stuck, whatever you have swimming in your mind over and over, whatever you're obsessing about, thinking about over and over, get that shit out of you. Whatever that is for you, just get it out of you, release it. I don't know what that is. That's up to you to answer for yourself. 
any thoughts for your audience on kind of like the way to say it out loud? Like, I know for me, I record like, you know, short little videos on my phone. That's kind of, for me, works out really nice. You kind of get to look at yourself at the same time and go back to it later. Any kind of tactics for how people should say it out loud? Or does that not really matter? It's just about the, you know, the act of voicing it. I love asking myself questions and I do that with you. I do that with other clients. So prompt yourself with the question. So here are two things you can ask yourself. What's going on? Keep it casual. Keep it open-ended. Literally ask yourself, hey, Vasavi, what's going on? And allow your, like, like just uh, ask yourself an open question and whatever comes out, just say it. Don't filter it. Don't edit it. Because if you're going to be filtered and edited with yourself, you cannot be honest with another person. So at least be practice being honest with yourself. So another thing you can ask yourself is, how am I feeling right now? And don't fucking lie to yourself. If you're going to lie to yourself, you're going to lie to everyone. And then you wonder why you don't have close relationships. Then you wonder why your relationships feel distant, right? Because you're not honest with yourself. So how am I feeling today? Just how am I feeling right now? I mean, right before we got on this interview, I was not feeling well. And I just said it. We, I, and I, I, I cried it out with you and I said, okay, let's go. Let's, let's record this. I'm good now, but I got it out of me. So how am I feeling right now? Or what's going on? That's it. Like, ask yourself. Cash. Mm-hmm. Uh, cash. Keep it cash. Be become. You're becoming friends with yourself. And if you became better friends with yourself, you'd probably stop hanging out with people who really did not really bring much to the table, right? So become best friends with yourself. Talk to yourself like you would a best friend. What's going on? How are you feeling? Talk to me. And talk to yourself. At least you know somebody's listening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 I love that so much. Keep it casual. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like we have such a culture in this, in our society of like editing ourselves, you know, whether it's at work or just in other places. And so this idea of keeping it real with yourself as kind of like a starting point, I think is super powerful. Thanks, Jason. What's maybe the most baddest thing that you were most proud of saying out loud? Um, whether that was kind of like, yeah, what you were saying, or maybe it was like the journey it took you to get to saying it out loud. But yeah, what's maybe like a moment you're most proud of as it relates to saying something out loud? You know, I've said, okay, (laughs) I've said a lot of things that I'm really proud of, but I think the thing that I'm most proud of is something that I'm going to say. Um, I have never ended, uh, except with my husband, my ex-husband, we ended very amicably. There was no fighting and there was no, it was so peaceful. Like I served him divorce papers. He said, okay. We lived with each other for a few months before I moved out and we do not have any animosity towards each other at all. He's remarried. He has a son. I'm very happy for him. Um, After him, I have not really ended relationships. Every relationship after that, and I've only had two after that, haven't ended well. They've just like... And I think how you end a relationship says a lot about you. And I think it matters how you end your relationships because it really does have an effect on what you allow in moving forward, right? Like in all my, in in the past two relationships, one of them was he left me. It was like very, very contentious. And then he left me and there was no, there was no closure. Like it was just very, it was very just aggressive and harsh. And so I immediately went into this other relationship This most recent relationship that, uh, you know, actually it's been four years since we've known each other. I'm at a place right now where I have such emotional neutrality around it. Uh, There's no sadness. There's no anger. But I do see, you know, when I want to call in, I want to call in new love, new love into my life. I cannot, I cannot receive that new love if my energy is, has this open loop in this relationship. So I am working with a friend of mine who happens to be a therapist and helps people with um, attachment styles. And I'm actually meeting her today and she's going to help me because I said to her, I really want closure with this relationship. What I mean by that is this is like him and I are not on bad terms. We're, we're, we're just, it's just whatever, but I'm done. I'm done. And I've never actually had a conversation in a relationship where it's ended in a way that's with respect and dignity it's always just been like this oh i'm leaving you or it's like fine fuck you and it's just and i'm not in a place where i want to be that way anymore i just i don't want that type of anger or energy and i'm not angry i'm just like okay i think we're done but i also don't want to go i want to be different in my closures in my completion right and so i um i, I want to respect myself and i want to respect him and so one of the things that i'm proud of is how i'm going to be communicating, hey, um, 
you know, I care about you and whatever, but I'm I'm ready to move on. So I just want you to know that we like I don't even know how I'm going to say it. I'm going to get some coaching from my friend because I do not know how to do this. This is my first time ending a relationship with dignity. I want to end this relationship with dignity so I can feel complete for me. Uh, I'm doing this for me. Okay, I'm not doing this for anyone else. I'm doing this for me because I think it is very important how you end relationships. Um, And uh, I never saw that with my parents growing up. You know, I never saw things being repaired. I just saw blow ups. And then the next day, everything would be fine. And it's like, what happened? Did you guys fix it? And, you know, as a kid, you're like, oh, I guess this is normal that we have blow ups and then we don't talk about it. And then the next day, everything's fine. So I'm at a place where I have great friendships. We have great, you know, I had, I had my girlfriend the other day. She shared something with me that I said jokingly, but that it, it upset her. And so she called me and we talked about it. And within five minutes, I was like, okay, we're, we're, we were good. She told me, I acknowledged it. I apologized because I could see that it hurt her. And I could, I put myself in my, her shoes and I was like, yeah, I'd be upset too. I'm so sorry. Even though my intention wasn't that, my impact was that it still hurt you. And I, I get to acknowledge that. And that felt really good to acknowledge that because yeah, I don't think anyone, any of us have malintentions, but we still have to acknowledge the impact of our words. And so I want to do things differently. I don't want to enter into a new relationship having this contention uh, with this previous relationship. So I'm very proud of this conversation that I'm going to be having, and I'm going to get some coaching and some help with this so I can have that. And I will share that with everyone on the podcast when it happens, after the fact. Oh. Yeah. yeah, well, that sounds exciting. And I just think it's such an amazing lesson. Like the way you close things is, I agree. It's just, it's so important, whether it's a relationship or, you know, I'm graduating school now. I I journaled on my last day. I just think closure and closing something and and kind of honoring that closure, I think is just really important. So I'm proud that you're doing that too. I think that's really awesome. Thanks, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Well, want to shift gears a little bit. You work on a lot. Um, you're doing a lot of exciting things that are kind of all with this same theme of saying it out loud and being your authentic self. So I know we've been talking a lot about kind of this idea of saying it out loud. What are some maybe other projects or areas where you feel like you are kind of encapsulating this theme of saying it out loud? Um, so, uh, you know, I have my book and if you're not on the wait list, <laughs> I'm always gonna, if yeah, you're not on the wait list, possibly forward slash wait list. It'll be in the show notes. We have the podcast. I have my say it out loud groups, a uh, group, sorry, uh, August 5th, that's coming up. And uh, y'all, if you're, if I've already shared this in a lot of the episodes, it's early bird pricing right now. Early enrollment is now open. Uh, so we have the program in all my friendships. I practice that. Mm-hmm. I'm also available for uh, corporate speaking, keynote speaking. I just got booked to do motivational speaking for a one hour event here in Austin, uh, all with the theme of saying it out loud. So my main mission, no matter who I speak to about what is free yourself so that you can do the work that you're meant to do here on this earth, right? Free yourself, whether you are working for somebody, whether you are working for yourself, just, you know, you you have stuff that's getting in the way of you showing up fully as yourself. And so my message is always going to be, what is the thing that you haven't said out loud? What is to another person or to yourself? What have you not acknowledged about yourself? What have you not celebrated about yourself? Sometimes the thing that we need to say out loud is, damn, I'm good at what I do. Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It's not always, oh my God, I feel sad. It's not always heavy shit. Sometimes it's like, fuck yeah, I'm available. Yeah. Fuck yeah, I'm available for hire. Maybe you're starting a new business or you're in business and you're like, why don't I have any sales? Because you're not talking about you and what you do and how you help others, right? Maybe you need to start saying it out loud. I'm an excellent uh, coach or, you know, Jason, I know you want to start coaching people, start letting people know if you want to be connected to your body, I am the person to go to, to help you get connected to your body. Like owning that about yourself. That's, I mean, Yes, it's when you start to just kind of rid yourself of and free yourself of a lot of the shame and humiliation and embarrassing things that you've been storing, then the stuff, like the stuff about you, the gold, the essence of who you are, the the, the beauty that you are, the godlike energy inside of you, that starts to flow through you. And then it's not so much about like, oh, I suck, it's this or that. It's like, no, I'm amazing. I'm amazing. But we got to free yourself of all that shame so you can get to that part of you that's like supernatural, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it's so true. Yeah. I, I like saying it out loud. Does it doesn't always have to be kind of like this emotional kind yeah. of place. It could be really celebratory and really exciting and, and really joyful. I, I know I have felt that way too. 
Um, if someone in the audience who's listening is kind of ready to say it out loud today and, and kind of wants to work with you or get in touch with you, any kind of great starting places for them to connect with you, whether it's on social or your site, or I just want to kind of give you a chance to kind of give people kind of the, the guideposts for how to find you next. Of course. Yeah, of, of course you know, subscribe to the podcast, keep listening to the podcast. But I would say your very first step is to join my group program. Uh, it's $500 for the 12 weeks, which is which is excellent because most therapy sessions are 150 an hour. And here you have 500 bucks for 12 weeks. You get me for 12 weeks straight and you get the community. And I have alumni pricing. So if you want to stay in the group, you can for a fraction of the cost. Uh, so I would, I would join the group. That's it. Join the group. We start August 5th. Um, there's also a three-part payment plan. Uh, yeah, that's the first step. Anything else you want to share on this podcast for your viewers that maybe we didn't get to touch on? Just want to kind of give you the floor if there's any last last words you want to share um do i want to say anything else i want to say thank you they, that 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 was a weird em emphasis on the you. Thank you. I said thank you. Thank you, Jason. I could not think of a better person to interview me. And uh, you're so beautiful at just holding space uh, for people. And uh, I can't wait to have you back on the podcast to maybe host another episode with a guest that comes on because you listen very deeply. And um, I can tell that your responses are so organic, they're not canned, like you're actually listening. Um, and I think, you know, you've done so much work on yourself and you know, you have the uh, beautiful ability to validate people and see people and uh, make them feel really safe and seen. So I love you for that. Um, and I just want to say thank you to you. I, I felt so great on my own podcast. <laughs> I love that. No, thank you. you so much. This was an awesome just moment to get to interview I feel like I actually learned more about you too which was also really exciting and yeah I hope anyone listening what did you learn about me I'm curious what? to know what, what did you learn about me I'm curious to know yeah I think some things I learned about you were like your journey of saying it out loud um I feel like when we first started working together it was clear that that was something you were um kind of inspiring me to do more of but knowing kind of how you got to where you are because we're all on a journey of saying things out loud more and more. I feel like the process doesn't ever fully end. It's a daily ritual. And so getting to kind of hear your journey of what kind of prompted you to know how important it was and kind of that moment of commitment, that was a kind of a new anecdote for me. So I, I loved hearing about it and it made me reflect on how important that commitment is to, to kind of to do it and make it a daily practice. Thank you so much. That means a lot to me hearing that from you. You're like one of my favorite people in the entire world. Yeah, same, same here. On our next, then my next guest session, maybe we could share a little bit more about how we met because it's a funny story, but we could, we can leave it as a cliffhanger for next. Uh, yes, definitely. As a, yeah, we should definitely do this again. We have great conversations. This yeah, is great. I, I, would, I, love I would love that so much. Um, thank you all for listening and hopefully we'll chat soon. Hi, everyone. Bye.